Hey everyone, it's Tom here from Ludicrous Feed. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're reviewing the EcoFlow portable battery, the Delta Max Edition. And in front of us here is the 1600 variant, which means it is a 1.6 kilowatt hour capacity. Let's take a walk around of the battery. So on this side, you've got the nice EcoFlow uh, badging there, and it's the Max variant, as I said. And you've got the two ventilation fans out the back. Let's keep walking around. And then on this side, you have got an LCD display. And also uh, down here, you've got four USB-A ports. These two are for fast charging. Then you've got two USB-C ports, 100 watts. And you can turn on this section here by pressing that button. This button up here is to help you connect to the EcoFlow app, which I'll show you as well. And to turn it on, you press that button there and that brings on the LCD display. And on there, pretty good uh, display there. You've got the uh, current state of charge, 100%. And then you've got the input and output in watts. So obviously input is when you are charging and then output is uh, whatever you are uh, uh, powering the battery for. For example, our Tesla Model 3 behind us. So we will see whether this works as a portable car charger as well. And then the number of hours there uh, for whatever device or appliance you are powering the battery with. And then uh, we'll keep walking around now. And then on this side, you can uh, hook up some more additional batteries. So uh, these two flaps can close quite neatly like that. So extra battery port one, and then this side, we've got extra battery port two. And then two extra ventilation fans there. These things do get quite hot, of course. And then we open this up, and there you are, you can connect an extra Delta battery with that port times two. And similarly on this side as well. Okay, we'll keep walking around. Close that nicely. EcoFlow badging there. Let's see what's on this side. I guess this is what is uh, of interest to me because you can, of course, uh, hook up uh, devices that use the 10 amp socket here in Australia. One, two, three, four. And we'll see whether we can charge the Model 3 behind us, as I said. And then this is how you charge the battery. You've got two ways to do it. You've got uh, solar car input and then the extreme charge, which is basically just uh, you know, using a 10 amp plug, which it does come supplied with. I'll just show you there. There you go, so they give you one of these. This is the standard sort of socket like that. You can find that with most appliances these days. And the other side, just plug that into your wall. So lift up the flap there. There we go. So that's how you uh, charge it using that. That goes straight in there, like that. Or this side you can uh, hook up solar panels, uh, which you can buy separately. Uh, or you can use your car as well. So this is what it comes supplied with as well. And on the other side, there is the 12 volt plug, which can plug into a lot of the cars that I've got uh, this plug. So that's quite handy as well. And then you can switch between fast, uh, which is sort of the standard uh, 240 volts, uh, or, or 10 amp speed rather, uh, and then slow custom, you can customize how fast you can uh, charge this battery, depending on your load, I guess, uh, on your supply. Uh, you can do that via the app, of course, we'll show you that a bit later on. And then this is to override any uh, load precautions that the battery is concerned about as well. So close that, yeah, and then you can uh, download the app from up here with that QR code as well. Okay, so just a couple more things to go through before we uh, do some testing. So there it is, a 24 month warranty, which you can register through the website, of course. And it also comes with a manual, it's a Delta Max manual. Just read you a couple of important specifications there. So that's a 1600 watt uh, variant we've got there. So it's 22 kilograms, so not light at all. Dimensions 49.7 times 24.2 times 30.5 centimeters with a capacity of 1612 watt hours or 1.6 kilowatt hours as i said and then the uh, four us or the four ac ports gives you a combined of 2000 watts or two kilowatts with a surge of 4600 watts and the max devices all power output combined maximum supported is 2500 watts and then the usb a ports fast charge versus normal 12 watts versus 18 watts that's the difference and the usb c is actually much faster 100 watts Car charger is of course 12 volt max, 126 watt max. And then these DC ports here, which I've never actually seen before. I'll just show you what I mean by that. 
So down here, uh, you've got these ports here. So I guess if you've got a device or appliance that can support that, that's what it's for. Uh, that's rated there at 12 volts once again. And then AC charging is 1600 watt max and uh, AC input voltage 10 amps, solar charging 800 watt max, car charger is uh, 12 volts, as we said. Our battery chemistry is uh, nickel cobalt manganese, NCM, shelf life one year, and cycle life 500 cycles to 80% capacity, because that's what it's warranted for. And they are the optimum operating temperatures right there. And it can support up to two Delta Max smart extra batteries as well. And what's important to note is that this battery is actually a UPS as well. So you can actually hook it up to a power source and also hook up an important appliance, for example, um, you know, whether it be a computer workstation you're working on for work. And then if the power were to cut at your place or at work, then the UPS kicks in within 30 milliseconds, I'm told. So that's quick enough to hopefully save some data so you don't lose your work. Uh, so that's good, good to know it's a, it's a UPS at the same time. 30 milliseconds, uh, they do recommend that you check with your appliance, particularly for medical life-saving devices, uh, that, to make sure that's quick enough, 30 milliseconds. And just back to the AC charging there, if you uh, select fast charging, it can actually top up the entire battery 200% within two hours, which is good to know. And of course you can customize how quick you want to charge it. Uh, it's uh, default is 400 watts on the slow or custom charging, and then down to 200 watts if you need that slower charge. Okay, I'm just gonna run through the app, which of course connects to the battery. I've called it the EV Charging Beast. And you can see the operating temperature. It's currently 23 degrees, current state of charge, number of hours remaining with the current uh, output. Um, and then you can, once we get a testing, you can see uh, the output of the battery and you can see um, how much power it's drawing. Um, and you can turn on the different sections from here as well. So it's also software controlled and you can see which ports are being utilized at the same time. And then in the settings section, uh, you can see that you can set the discharge and charge level, which is very cool. So I guess being an NCM battery, you probably generally don't want to charge it at 100% too often, but obviously for the purposes of this test, we will for today. I think generally 80% is what is recommended if you want to keep it at that state of charge most of the time. And then, as I said before, you can, uh, you can regulate how fast you want your charge speed at. So I've got it on fast at the moment because it's switched to fast, but say for example, we switch it to the custom setting here. So let's go custom. Okay. And then on the app, it should respond pretty quickly. There we go. It's already allowing you to set the charge speed. Super handy. And the beeps, if you want on or off, car input, the amperage you can set there. Yeah, and then timeout setting, uh, screen timeout, AC timeout, and firmware. It looks like I have a firmware upgrade, so I might do that right now before we start testing. Okay, so the obvious question for me is, you know, what do I do with this battery exactly? What is it actually useful for? Now, of course, two things come to mind. And the first thing is that it's useful for the outdoors. So if you're camping or if you're bringing it to a picnic, for example, you can hook it up to, let's say, a portable induction stove. So this is just uh, one that I have got over the years. Uh, I purchased from Amazon. It's been very useful for uh, portable usage. And there it is there, just at the 2000 setting. I assume W stands for watts. Uh, whether it correlates to that much energy, I'm not sure. We will have a look at the LCD display in a second but there it is just uh, cooking an egg there. And you can also start to hear the fan starting to whir up here as well, as it's trying to dissipate heat. But as we follow the stove's cord to the back of the battery, there it is plugged into the 10 amp section here. And then you can see on the screen how much power it's drawing. So its uh, output is 1,000 uh, 500 watts, uh, it's drawn so far 3% of the battery, 56 hours remaining if we go at this rate. And then on the app as well, you can see it correlates, correlates fairly well. There you go, 1.5, yep, pretty neck and neck there. And you can see the state of charge correlates as well, and the operating temperature at 23 degrees. 
And yeah, you can see that's how much energy is being drawn uh, as a graph. And you can see the power button being pressed, which you can stop from the app as well. So yeah, there it is, cooking an egg. Okay, so a few minutes have elapsed, and as you can see there, it's starting to bubble. So once that starts to boil, we can turn down the heat at the portable stove. Okay, so I would say the water is pretty much boiling now, very much bubbling. And then we could turn the heat down at this point. So let's say, let's go to 1200. So it's kind of just bubbling away there rather than spilling over. And then at 1200, let's go back to the battery's LCD display. There you go, so it's dropped down to 1000 watts. And we've used 8% of the battery cooking or boiling this egg so far. And we'll get it hard boiled, so it might boil it for another, let's say, seven or eight minutes. Okay, so this egg has been boiling in about 600 mils of water for the last seven minutes. Uh, I'm just gonna turn the uh, device off now. Okay, and then over to the LCD screen and 83%. So it's required 17% of the battery's capacity to uh, boil an egg or hard boil an egg in that much water on a portable induction stove. Okay, now the next most important use for this battery is of course uh, the ability to provide backup for the house. And I think, you know, speaking from experience during a blackout, what you really want is your fridge to keep running so that your cold items can be stored safely. And so at the moment it is connected to my fridge and see that it's running. It's only running really at 137 watts, so not much electricity at all. And at this rate, as we know, the fridge powers on and off uh, during its usage. It's not always on. Uh, when it reaches the desired temperature, then it uh, shuts off. But even so, at this rate, you've got eight hours of battery life left in this thing at 82% state of charge, which is pretty good. Hopefully, you know, your power will be restored by then. And at under $3,000 for the 1600 watt variant, it's a lot cheaper than buying a full battery, like for example, a Tesla Powerwall 2, which is nowadays 15,000 Australian dollars, or thereabouts, sometimes more. So, you know, it's pretty good value uh, just to keep your fridge running. And just to prove it, I'll just, uh, show you it is definitely plugged in there there we go all right and then running to my fridge there we go and the lights are definitely on in the fridge you can hear it running and i'll just pan up so you can see there you go the fridge light is definitely on so there we go uh, fantastic backup device uh, for your fridge during a blackout now the third and final usage is of course to see whether it can charge an electric vehicle such as the Tesla Model 3 behind us. But before we do that, I just wanted to top up to 100% again. So you can see how much range we can get with this uh, 1600 Delta Max variant. There it is plugged in to a power outlet to charge up. And we'll just cycle around here to the front to show the LCD display. There we go. So at 83% state of charge, it's getting about 1500 watt input, climbing steadily. And at this rate, it should take 21 minutes to get that final 17%. Okay, so now that it's sort of reached 84%, uh, the charging rate has slowed down. Uh, but nevertheless, 27 minutes remaining to get to 100%. So we'll, we'll wait a bit longer before we uh, charge the car. Um, and so, yeah, as we saw earlier with the instruction manual, it takes under two hours to charge the battery to 100% from 0%. Okay, so we're back and the battery is now 99% state of charge, uh, still charging at about 700 watts. I think, um, I think the battery does overcall the amount of time needed to charge. I mean, admittedly, the last percent probably is going to take a long time, but I think for practical purposes, you don't need to charge to 100% if you are in a bit of a hurry. I think 99% is enough for today's test. Just to give you an idea of how long it takes to charge the battery from 0 to 100%, these two photos were taken approximately one hour apart, and it took about five minutes to get it from 0 to 8%, and then as you saw earlier, it takes another 15 minutes to get it from 84% to 100%. So, all in all, you can definitely charge this battery from 0 to 99% in under one hour and a half, or 90 minutes. 
Okay, so we're going to charge our Tesla Model 3 with the EcoFlow battery. So currently it is 25 degrees Celsius, beautiful day in Sydney. 76% state of charge, 321 kilometers of projected range. So let's hop to it. Okay, so a bit of bad news, everyone. I can't quite get the uh, Tesla UMC to play nicely with the EcoFlow. Uh, I already have the grounding adapter. So there it is there, plugged in on to the AC side. And there is the grounding adapter there that EcoFlow kindly sent me. Uh, and then it's plugged into the USB-C part here, which is what it's supposed to do. So well, this is what happens when I try to plug in the UMC. So this is the one that came with our Tesla Model 3. So let's plug it in now. Okay. Looks promising when it flashes green, but then it flashes red. And then when I try to plug in uh, the charger into the car, push up, plug in. Okay. And it flashes red like that. You can hear the beep in the car. And it says, uh, unable to charge with mobile connector. Inadequate socket grounding. Uh, and believe me, I've tried all combinations. So I've tried uh, putting the grounding adapter into all the different sockets and I've also tried all the sockets for the Tesla UMC as well and I've even tried plugging the grounding adapter into uh, different USB-C ports as well unfortunately to no avail uh, and I've even tried using my Tesla Model S's uh, UMC which is a bit older so so here it is this is the Gen 1 Tesla UMC that came with our Model S and same sort of thing happens. So if I plug that into there, okay, see that how it flashes red? That's not a good sign. And same thing when I try to plug in, like that. And same thing, beeping the car, flashes red, uh, means it's not working either. And I've also plugged that into all four sockets and tried different combinations with the grounding adapter as well. Uh, those of you who follow my channel will know that the grounding adapter actually worked with the Hyundai Ionic 5. So uh, uh, I'll show you some snippets of that very shortly and I'll leave a link to the video description uh, below as well. Okay, so I've plugged in the Ionic portable uh, charger into the uh, 10 amp socket and it's uh, all good. It's showing green. All right, let's uh, plug it into the vehicle. Here we go. All right. Heard a click. Car's whirring. Start charging. Okay, that's a good sign. This is flashing. All right, so it's drawing 1.2 uh, kilowatts. And yes, the Ionic 5 is indeed showing that it is charging. 2% instead of charge currently, charging at 1.2 kilowatts. So there you go. Unfortunately, not working with the Tesla Model 3 or the Tesla UMC. Uh, maybe someone who has found a solution with the EcoFlow battery and has successfully charged with a Tesla Model 3 here in Australia or Model Y, uh, let us know in the comment section. All right, everyone, there it is, the EcoFlow Delta Max 1600 variant, a fantastic backup battery with UPS capability, uh, very useful indeed, and uh, also useful for uh, portable usage. And as you saw, unfortunately, you cannot charge the Tesla Model 3, but as we've seen previously on the channel, uh, it can charge other EVs such as the Hyundai Ionic 5. We'll uh, keep testing other EVs to see what else it can charge in the future. Uh, I wanna thank EcoFlow once again for sending me this battery to review, thank you very much. I'll leave my referral link to this product in the video description below if you wanna check it out for yourselves. All right everyone, thank you so much for watching. And until the next ludicrous feed video, happy charging.